All right, guys, in this particular problem, we're going to be talking about properties of exponents and scientific notation. So we're given a word problem, so let's go ahead and read the problem, and then we'll talk about how we're going to set it up. It says light travels through space at a speed of 3 times 10 to the fifth power, and this is in kilometers per second. How many minutes does it take to travel from the sun to earth? So what they want to know here is how long it takes light to travel from the sun to earth. And look, they also give you the distance to earth from the sun, and that's going to be 1.5 times 10 to the 11th power, and that is in meters. So before you go ahead and try to set up this problem, you want to look at your units, right? So looking at my units here, I'm given kilometers per second, and I'm given meters. So what do they want here? Well, they want your final answer to be in minutes, right? That's what they want. They want to know how many minutes it takes light to travel from the sun to earth. So they want the final answer in minutes, okay? So if we look at our speed, we have the following. 3 times 10 to the fifth power, right? And this is kilometers per second. If we just look at the units here, which is kilometers per second, Right, so I'll write it below, kilometers per second, right? We want to essentially convert this to meters per minute, okay? And we want to do that for the following reason, because once we convert this to meters per minute, if we look at our distance here, which is in meters, if we simply divide, look what happens. So if we do distance, which in case is meters, divided by speed, which is meters per per minute, notice how my meters will naturally cancel and I'm left with minutes. And again, that's what they want, right? They want the final answer in minutes here. So we now know the steps that we need to take in order to solve this problem. We must first convert and then divide, right? So let's go ahead and do this. So let's go ahead and erase this work. And we're ready to go ahead and convert our speed, right? We're all set up here. Now, before we do this, we want to go ahead and write our rules down, okay, for scientific notation. And I'm going to go ahead and write them right below here. So we know the following. We want scientific notation to be in the following format, where we have m times 10 to the nth power, right? And we want m to be greater than or equal to 1 and less than 10. So m has to be greater than or equal to 1 less than 10. Okay? So here are our rules for scientific notation, and we'll have to keep that in mind as we go through this problem. All right, so the goal is when you do this conversion, you essentially want to keep it in scientific notation. So let's go ahead and set this up. First, we're going to convert kilometers into meters, okay? Now, we know the following. We know that there are a thousand meters in one kilometer. So what we can say here is kilometers on the bottom, meters on the top, and we want to stay consistent here. Again, we want to stay in scientific notation. So how can I write 1 in scientific notation? Well, I can simply write it as 1 times 10 to the 0 power, because, you know, anything to the 0 power is simply going to be 1, and then 1 times 1 is just 1, right? So that's how we're going to go ahead and write this in scientific notation. We have to do the same thing for meters, so think about how you can do that. Well, how can you write a thousand, okay, with a base of 10? Well, you can simply write it as 10 to the third power. That's going to equal a thousand. And if we want to write this in scientific notation, it's going to be 1 times 10 to the third power. Again, we're staying consistent and keeping everything in scientific notation. All right. So we just went ahead and converted kilometers to meters. So we're done with these units. They cancel. All right, our next step, we want to convert seconds into minutes. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up that conversion. So we know that there are 60 seconds in one minute. Okay, so again, think about how you can write 60 seconds, okay, in scientific notation. Okay, so we're going to have seconds on the top, minutes on the bottom. So how can we write 60 seconds in scientific notation? Well, we can do it the following way, 60 times 10 to the zero power. However, the only problem here is, look at my m value. My m value has to be greater than or equal to one and less than 10. This is greater than 10. 
So in order to put this in the proper format, we have to take our decimal point, which is right here, and we need to move it over to the left one. So we have 6.0, and this will be times 10, and notice that my exponent now becomes one. Okay, it's important to understand that these are both the same value, however, this one's in the correct format, okay? So we're gonna write it this way right here. So our seconds are gonna be represented in scientific notation the following way. We have six times 10 to the first power, okay? And now minutes, again, we know that in 60 seconds there is one minute, so we wanna write one in scientific notation, so one times 10 to the zero power, okay? And now, okay, we can see that seconds cancels and we're left with meters per minute, exactly what we want. Okay, so now we essentially have to do this operation out. Okay, and this is pretty straightforward. So we're first going to work the numerator and then the denominator. So looking only at my m value, which is here, here, and here, we're simply gonna multiply. So three times one times six, that is going to give you 18. So we have 18 here. And we'll have times 10, okay? Now, since I have the same base, base of 10, base of 10, base of 10, and I'm multiplying, this goes back to the product property of exponents. So if you have the same base and you're multiplying, you simply add the exponent. So I have five plus three plus one, which is going to give me nine, okay? And then if you go ahead and look at your denominator here, right? Well, what is happening here? Okay, we already said that anything to the zero power is going to be one, right? So this is essentially one times one. Same thing here, one times one. So all you're doing is one times one, which is just one. And we know that if we divide by one here, right? Well, our answer is just going to remain the same. So our final answer here for our speed is gonna be 18 times 10 to the ninth power. But again, look at the format in which you need to be in. Our m value, which is right here, okay, this is greater than 10. Again, proper format has to be greater than or equal to 1 and less than 10. So we need to take our decimal point, which again is right here, and we need to move it to the left. So now we have 1.8 times 10, and now it's going to be to the 10th power. Again, recognize that these are both the same value. However, this one's in the correct format. And our units here is meters per minute. Okay. Now we are all set to get our final answer. Okay. So like we talked about at the beginning of this video, we simply just need to divide. So we're going to take our distance and divide it by our speed. So let's go ahead and set that up and let's do this one in red. So we're going to have 1.5 times 10 to the 11th power. And this is meters divided by 1.8 times 10 to the 10th power, and this is gonna be meters per minute. And again, we can see that our units are going to cancel, so meters cancels, and we're left with minutes, exactly what we want. So again, you're gonna do the same thing here. First, you're gonna take care of your M values. So you're gonna do 1.5 divided by 1.8, right? And when we do that, we're gonna get the following. We're gonna get 0.83, 0.83 repeating, okay? And now we'll have times 10. And then again, we have the same base, okay, which is gonna be 10, so a base of 10 and a base of 10. We're dividing, so this goes back to the quotient property of exponents, so when you have the same base and you divide, you subtract the exponents. So 11 minus 10 is gonna give you one. So now we have one here. And our final step is to take this out of scientific notation so that we get a clear representation of the time. So again, this exponent here is telling me to go to the decimal point and move it to the right one. So our final answer is gonna be the following. We're gonna have 8.3, and we're gonna round this, three, and this is minutes. And that is gonna be your final answer. So we know that it takes light 8.33 minutes to travel from the sun to earth. Okay, and that is it.